Hello there, everybody! I'm Mr. GamePie. For those of you who don't know, my first main Let's Play video that I made was Mega Man 4 Part 1, uploaded August 4th, 2011. Well, it's now August 4th, 2017, meaning that we've reached the end of Year 6. Let's look back on the year and see what all has been accomplished. Due to going back to college again, I didn't work on as many series as I did in Year 5, but it's been far from uneventful. The first series I worked on this year was a continuation of Year 5's last project, Let's Play Splatoon. While I completed the duration of the main story from July 11th to July 26th, I worked from August 8th to September 9th to show off all the amiibo content. That took a whole 16 episodes. I brought along some co-commentators like in the main series, but I also did some content solo this time around, a first for any Splatoon content I've created. Some challenges were easy, some challenges were tough, but in the end, I got past them all. During those Amiibo episodes, I had a bit of an issue with my recording equipment, and thus needed to work on a different project. As such, on August 15th, I started up Let's Play Sonic Mega Mix, a fan hack of the original Sonic the Hedgehog. The series lasted until August 24th, and was 8 episodes long. I brought along my good friend Austin on Sugar, and we discussed a variety of topics, including the then-recently announced Sonic Mania. The next major series would be Danganronpa, my first time doing an M-rated game, and it wasn't very popular. The series lasted from September 12th to September 26th, and was 8 parts long. You might be saying, Wow, Mr. Game Pie, how'd you complete such a big visual novel like Danganronpa in such a short amount of time with so few episodes? Well, I'll tell you how, by cancelling it before even completing the first chapter. The series got next to no views. I was putting in more effort than usual, and by that point my first college semester in a long time had started up. Something needed to drop, and Danganronpa was the thing to go. I still enjoy the game and its sequel, and perhaps I'll do something related to it again in the future, but this LP just wasn't meant to last. That said, I was still creating videos during my college semester. From September 16th to January 20th, I uploaded Super Mario Galaxy Versus on a weekly basis. Zack was my opponent for this series, and it was an intense ride. I'm not gonna spoil the ending here, but we had solid competition throughout, and it all came down to the wire at the end. I took something of a break during the winter, but at the start of 2017, I had a new series ready to roll. Rabby Reby started up January 2nd and ended March 22nd. It was 36 parts, quite a bit longer than most LPs I make. That said, this series could technically continue, as I will be going over any DLC as it's made. The game attracted me with its Metroidvania gameplay elements, my favorite genre, as well as having one of its main protagonists, Ribbon, named after a Kirby character, my favorite series. The gameplay was good enough to allow me to ignore the rather intense otaku elements the game radiates. Not something I'm really a fan of, as you'll find in my commentary. With a variety of bullet hell bosses, the game can be pretty tough, but I collected everything in the game and showed off some competent dodging skill along the way. For roughly half of Rabi Reby's duration, I'd have another series going on concurrently, alternating between Rabi Reby and the other series. The first series that acted as Rabi Reby's counterpart was Shovel Knight, which went from January 3rd to February 6th, and lasted 12 parts. An excellent game that really showed off Kickstarter's potential when it came out, I really enjoyed this game and had a blast going through it. George GW was a commentator throughout, with Austin appearing at the beginning and end, and Zack showing up in the middle of the series. I only did Shovel Knight's story, but who knows, maybe I'll go back and do the other two, soon to be three, characters someday. After Shovel Knight ended, I started up another Let's Play to alternate with Rabi Reby, and that game was Freedom Planet, which lasted from February 8th to February 24th, and was seven parts long. I also did a video on the Freedom Planet 2 demo after the series was over. I played as Mila for both. Another kickstarted indie game, this whole period of time was something of an indie game platforming marathon for me. None of these series got many views, which is odd since they meshed pretty darn well with most of my previous content, but I certainly had a blast creating all of them. For Freedom Planet, Austin was a co-commentator throughout, and we had George at the very beginning of the series. The next series I'd do was actually on someone else's channel. It was 20XX, with one of my original inspirations for Let's Playing, Deceased Crab. When DC said during his main Let's Play of the game that he would be interested in doing multiplayer for it, but had nobody to do it with, I figured I'd be just the guy for the job. While I hadn't played 20XX itself at the time, I am quite skilled at Mega Man games in general, 
and was able to buy and practice the game well enough for me to be able to play the game properly when it came time to record. We did the challenge mode of the game with more enemies, longer levels, and a never-ending game length. Due to our combined skill at the game, it took us quite a while to die off, but eventually all good things come to an end. The multiplayer part of the series was 10 episodes and lasted from March 14th to April 2nd. Now I'd like to talk about the streams I did this year. Some basic trends continued as per normal with more Civilization Revolution and Splatooning live streams, but there were also two main streaming series throughout the year. The first was Pac-Man World 3, which took four streams to complete, and was actually quite popular compared to just about anything else I was doing at the time. I know Pac-Man World 3 is my most popular Let's Play on the channel by a wide margin, but I guess a lot of people subscribe because of that series and then just never watched anything else I made. It's odd, I, I know a lot of people do just play one game on their channel and that's it, but that's typically a large infinite game like Minecraft or Overwatch or something. Pac-Man World 3 just doesn't have that kind of content, but it seems like there were some people who kind of expected it or something. The other main streaming series was Xenoblade Chronicles X, which, while I did have quite a bit of fun with, I unfortunately lost my will to play the game due to a variety of issues I had with the combat and overall general gameplay. Meaning that while I got quite close to finishing the game, after 10 streams I still never did manage to reach the end. Then February 4th came, bringing about my final YouTube stream. I played a lot of my favorite games, Sonic 3 & Knuckles, Mega Man 10, I even showed off Kirby the Amazing Mirror for the first time on my channel. I wrapped it up with some Splatoon, and with that, the plan was to move from onto Twitch from there on out. Except I never actually did get to the point of streaming on Twitch. This is for a variety of reasons, from technical issues to burnout, but I'm glad to say that starting next Saturday, August 5th, the Saturday Twitch streams will actually be starting up this time. Yep, weekly streams are returning once more, and I hope to see y'all there every week at 7pm Central Time. The final YouTube stream wasn't the only final YouTube thing I uploaded this year though. On March 27th, I began my final YouTube Let's Play, Mega Man 4. It lasted until March 31st, and was 5 episodes long. I figured if I was going to leave YouTube, I wanted to leave in a special way, and I couldn't think of a better way than by bookending my time there with my final Let's Play being the same as my first Let's Play. It had been over five years since I had uploaded that series, and I believe that the time and experience showed. The newer version of the Let's Play had better gameplay, better commentary, and better editing. I found it to be a wonderful send-off to the site. So let's talk about the move, shall we? After having to cancel Danganronpa and with Mario Galaxy vs not getting many views, I figured something was pretty fishy. YouTube was undergoing some algorithm changes again, and looking at my YouTube statistics, I found that I hadn't gotten a solid viewership in years. I felt like it was about time that I switched gears and tried moving to a new site. The very next day, my friend Zack, also known as 8-Bit Sonic 1, or Flarp, messaged me and told me about a relatively new video platform known as Vidme. I immediately made a Vidme account, and on December 7th, I began re-uploading a lot of my old content there. I didn't put up everything. Older series, series that didn't meet my personal quality requirements, or series that were pretty much a product of their time, like the Ing series or Versus, I kept on YouTube. For the duration of this re-upload period, I kept a close eye on my views and whether they were increasing or decreasing, seeing if a move would truly be a good idea. But as previously mentioned, Rabby Reby, Shovel Knight, and Freedom Planet didn't get very many views each, and for several months in a row I was stuck at exactly 888 subscribers, gaining and losing subs at a perfectly equal rate. With a rapid upload schedule on the videos on the Vidme channel, I finally synced up both channels at the very end of Rabby Reby, meaning that the final YouTube series, Mega Man 4, would be uploaded concurrently with its VidMe counterpart. Finally, on April 3rd, I officially made the move, creating a video on YouTube discussing my leave and a video on VidMe officially introducing myself to the community. As a whole, the move was pretty effective. Despite having far fewer followers on VidMe and VidMe's platform as a whole being smaller, I still get roughly twice the views I was getting on YouTube. Interestingly, one of my greatest fears of the move was that I was partnered with Maker Studios at the time, and I wasn't sure if my contract would allow for the move. I began the process of asking to leave pretty early on, but as many may know, that process is long and ridiculous. Fortunately, I didn't need to complete that process, because one week before I made my move official, Maker dropped all but their 300 most affluent partners, which I wasn't even remotely a part of. All things added up, 
it seems like this choice was the right one to make. So that brings us to my first Vidme exclusive Let's Play, Mega Man 10. It went from April 4th to April 10th, and lasted 5 episodes. This was also a redo of an old Let's Play since Mega Man 10 was the second Let's Play I did, and much like my redo of Mega Man 4, everything about this new version was better. I love this game, it's my favorite of the Mega Man series, and starting up with a new exclusive content with this game was the only way I could go in my mind. The next series was one I was quite excited for, my blind run of ukulele. I love the Banjo-Kazooie games, as one can see in the Let's Plays I made of those years ago, and with this game showed up on Kickstarter, I backed it really fast. While I wouldn't say this game matched the games I, it was trying to revive, it was still an excellent time in its own right. I didn't quite get 100%, there were just a few challenges that I didn't want to do, but I got the majority of the collectibles in the game and did it quite efficiently for a first playthrough. The series had a few delays and breaks due to college classes, and as such it went from April 11th to July 17th, and just barely beat out Rabbi Reby as the longest Let's Play this year with 40 episodes. After having such fun recording 20XS with Deceased Crab, I decided to start up on my own series on 20XX. Thus, on April 15th, 20XXing was born. It's a casual series where every episode, I do a run through the game. 20XX is a roguelike, meaning that every playthrough is different. I typically focused on the daily and weekly challenges for this series, but I've also done a vast variety of personal challenges and showcases of certain features. I'm not sure how long this series will last, but it'll go on for at least a while longer. After playing Rabbi Reby and getting a taste of the bullet hell mechanics, as well as years of enjoying the series' music, I finally decided to try out the Toho series. After playing a few of the games, I wanted to try my hand at a Let's Play of one. In general, the most popular Let's Players out there are fail-heavy, super-reaction-focused types. This isn't normally how I make my content, it's basically the opposite of my formula, but my Toho Let's Plays are the closest that I get. The first game I did was Toho 10, Mountain of Faith, which lasted from April 27th to May 3rd, lasting 5 episodes. And the second was Toho 12, Undefined Fantastic Object, which started July 18th and hasn't technically ended yet. I assure you, that last episode is being worked on. I am just so close to being that final boss. Why, Bayakarin? Why? The next series to bring up is Minecrafting, which I started up on July 21st. On YouTube, I had a series known as Minecraft Blogging, where I, well, talked about my life while Minecraft happened in the background. Minecrafting is basically a revival of that series, with a new version of Minecraft and a new world to go with it. Not many episodes have been made yet, but hey, it's a much more relaxing atmosphere than 20XX, allowing me to focus more on sharing stories. Who knows what exciting tales I'll tell. Or just what new obsessions I'll share, either way. <laughs> That brings us to our final series for this year, Sonic Classic Heroes. Started on July 27th, and while it's still ongoing, I project that it will end on August 8th, as it has 9 episodes total. The previously mentioned Sonic Forces is nearly upon us, and so to celebrate its release, I decided to play this neat ROM hack. It has the first two Sonic games, but allows you to play as the Sonic 3 and Knuckles iterations of Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, as well as SPO Charming and Vector from Knuckles Chaotix. But what's more is it has the Sonic Heroes mechanic of being able to switch characters on the fly. The Sonic 3 abilities really rip the first two games in half in the most beautiful ways, and I show that off quite effectively for the duration of this playthrough. I feel like I've done a really good job this year. I made good series, I worked hard to provide consistent content, and I persevered through a variety of technical and circumstantial issues. This year had a lot of indie and fan games with hardly any of my core Kirby or Sonic content to speak of which is a situation I plan on changing here in the near future. As a whole, I don't think this next year will be much different from this one for the most part. I've been looking into making DS Let's Plays a reality, so we might finally see a few games from that system on the channel, uh, so that'll be neat. I'll still be attending college classes, and thus there may be some breaks or hiatuses in the future due to that. All that said, there is one major change that will be occurring in the, here in the coming year. I've been making these videos for six years now. And despite some minor efforts towards monetization, I've barely made over $100 in total all this time. I'd like to be able to f keep my focus on making these videos, but for me to do that, they'll need to start making some more money. Or just some money. <laughs> As such, with this in mind, I've started up a Patreon account. For those who don't know what Patreon is, it's a website that allows people to support their favorite content creators and get special rewards in return. 
By supporting me, you can get a variety of perks, from access to a special Discord account to even getting special shoutouts in my videos. I really do want to keep creating these videos, so any support you can provide would be greatly appreciated. Well gang, with all that said, I think that's it for this year. What will the next year bring? We'll just have to wait and find out. Until then, I'm Mr. GamePie. Y'all stay sufficiently awesome.